I know. Judge Shanine Pirro now joins us on the couch, and you're shaking your head because we have to change your topic because we're we got to talk about this breaking news. Well, the problem, and the reason I shake my head is we're now seeing the normalization, as I've said before, of cop killings. This is starting to be almost you know routine every week. Something we're hearing, something is happening, and I guarantee you that there are people out there who are cheering the fact that a police officer was shot in the line of duty, irrespective of this particular case, the facts of this case are yet to be revealed. Yeah. But at the same time, if you think about it, eight years ago, were people talking the way they're talking now about no. police? Eight years ago, were police worried about the fact that, you know, when they go out, they've got a target on their backs? I heard you in the other segment. They take their uniforms off as soon as they're done with work. Mm -hmm. This is a frightening time, and it goes to one place, and you can talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. And from Obama to Hillary Clinton, they cannot stand there and say, oh, we support police, when for the last seven years it's been about how the police are mistreating mm -hmm. minorities. Judge, this is happening. We're talking about this this morning. Just last night, you had the sheriff from Dallas. Was from Dallas. He was talking about the five officers that were killed and right. saying, let's have a moment of silence for all the officers, the 33 that have been killed this year. Moment of silence, and then you have people in the audience chanting, Black Lives Matter. Take a listen, wow. and we'll talk about it. Please help me. In honor of all of American fallen officers, with a moment of silence. You see, that's shameful, and that's my point. They, this would not have happened eight years ago. And people need to understand that there is a difference between America today and America eight years ago. And if this is what they want a continuation of, then they know Judge, who to vote for, the, 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 the theater that we saw last night. Judge, one saluted in day one law enforcement of the military, and the other really had to be forced to do it, it seems, because Parties. of public sentiment yep. with, the chief, with, the, with the police chief coming out there talking about those who lost their lives in Baton Rouge and in Dallas. So you really, as a voter, you have to say to yourself, it is really not a gray issue anymore. No, it isn't a gray issue. And what it is, is I think now up to that small number in the middle of Americans who are going to say, you know what? I like what they said, but what is happening now, as evidenced by what went on at this convention, uh, is not reality. It's not consistent with how they have conducted themselves, uh, the Democrats, for the last eight years. You know, we just had uh, the fellow who started Blue Lives right. Matter here and asked him, you know, how this gets started? How do we get to this point where he's got uh, another 10 years before he can retire. We were talking to some uh, Secret Service guys who have proudly worn the badge representing the United States of America. I think one guy is two years away from retirement. And you know what? He's counting the days because you just never know these days. And, and think about the families, the spouses. Know. You know, when they see news like this, it's almost like a, a, a PTSD when you talked about uh, it was Faulkner's wife from uh, yeah. how many years ago? 33, 34, 34 years ago. This is damage to our society. It is a constant strike against law and order. It is a strike against, you know, what we assume is safety and security in this country. And right. I mean, these guys are just targets. So Maureen Faulkner had joined us earlier, 34 right. years ago, her husband was slain in the line of duty, and she said this about today's news. I personally think that President Obama has, has caused a great divide in this country, and he has caused the tension that is out there, and, you know, so many officers now are being gunned down, and they're only there to protect other people. And it breaks my heart. I'm, I become quite emotional to think that, you know, a father and a husband um, the children will not see their dad anymore, and his wife will not, will no longer have him in her arms. Yeah, Judge, you're a mom. Ah, oh, I uh, look uh, the the pain that I've seen, and I've seen it up close working with cops for um, you know 30 years. But one of the things that is so frustrating is that this it, these are the people that we should be protecting, that we should be cheering, and it's not sure. happening. So it's so interesting. Black Lives Matter is one that gets their point across that there's a different experience with law enforcement if you're African American. And Tim Scott, a Republican, brought that up. And Newt Gingrich says you have to understand this. So. But all this stuff, the, the chanting of Black Lives Matter, the interrupting a moment of silence, that doesn't help 
anybody. It doesn't help anybody, and it incites other people. Sure. Because there are people out there who are saying, yeah, Black Lives Matter. I don't I won't want to take a minute for the police who die. That's their problem. You know, uh, they owe us. We have been hurt. We have been sure. damaged. We have been killed. Judge, we've, we've, we've heard a number of people already today blaming President Obama for the larger, <laughs> you know, some of the things that are going on in this country regarding the anti-cop sentiment. Um, but soon we're going to have a new president. Have, and Donald Trump has made it very clear he's the law and order uh, candidate. Yeah, he, but have we heard enough from Hillary Clinton defending the police? No, absolutely not. And the, what you saw last night, Steve, was political theater. It was theater that was designed to get to your heart. This woman is everything that we want in a president. Let's make history. She's the best. It's all words. It's all theater. It's a play. I mean, you know, Chandra Ryan is the one who did the yeah. uh, the, video the video of Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. The woman the behind music. Scandal. Yeah, Didn't the woman mention behind any scandals. <laughs> How, in appropriate. How appropriate. How right, appropriate. She, here she is last night. He's taken the Republican Party a long way from morning in America to midnight in America. Donald Trump says he wants to make America great again. Well, he could start by actually making things in America again. It comes down to what Donald Trump doesn't get. America is great because America is good. So, Judge, after that, Trump took to Twitter, and this is what he, he wrote. Hillary's vision is a borderless world where working people have no power, no jobs, no safety. And, you know, if people think that this woman is capable of saving us, again, look at the last eight years. Do you feel safer now? Is the world a better place? Can we thank Hillary Clinton for her uh, policy when she was at the State Department? Everybody is on edge waiting for so the what next What should Donald hit. Trump say today? What would maybe win over the people that are on edge? Or they're not well, sure if they're going to vote for him. Donald on the Trump. Fence. Has to, the people who are on the fence have to hear from Donald Trump what he said right at the beginning, and that is that we need to thank law enforcement. We need to make sure the police officers are defended by us, but they also need, I have to tell you something, cops don't make the money that they need of to, to live, number one. And cops right now are thinking about retiring early or getting a pension or not signing up, you know, for additional years. And I think that what we've got to do is pay them appropriately, stand up for them, have a movement in America where every time a cop is killed, not just the wall of blue shows up, but the rest of the city uh, and the county uh, stays unfortunately, up. Unfortunately, not many people could take that many days off from work because this keeps happening so much. But I will say this. I, I seem to remember, and that's why I was looking this up while you were talking. It's getting so bad, I think Democrats are starting to realize, and Hillary Clinton's starting to pay the price politically, or it's just sincerity on the president's part. He put it on July 19th, he put out an open letter to law enforcement just expressing gratitude and saying, you know, clearly, I've got your back. Well, because after that, that forum came out where right. he had that meeting on ABC mm -hmm. for an hour, that wasn't clear at the end of it. It was more, uh, we understand the plight of those who are victimized by police. I don't think there's any question, if anyone has been listening for the last year, that Donald Trump is pro-law enforcement. He was pro-law enforcement before it was kind of in vogue, before we started seeing a lot of what's been happening lately. Uh, I think Donald Trump is going to be a friend of the veterans. He's going to be a friend to the law enforcement. He understands respect for authority and what we need to be safe. Those are the two areas of the two groups groups that, that will protect us, law enforcement and the military. And no one has stood up for them. And Hillary Clinton can talk all she wants about how she's going to take care of people. That Veterans Administration disaster, oh, she, you know, what, what, from when she was in the White House to when she was a senator right. to when she was Secretary of State, come on, it's I, not words anymore. Judge, I think what you're saying is November, people have a choice. It's pretty clear, right. the choice. When do we see your show? Uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to be talking about Hillary's uh, acceptance speech last night. You're not going to want to miss it. You know, it. it's funny you should mention <laughs> the acceptance speech. On the cover of the New York Post this morning, here's their headline. Uh, Hillary speaks to the DNC. She waives her $200,000 speaking fee. It's on me. And she released the transcript. Yeah. yeah. And don't you love hearing her talk about Wall Street? I mean, she talks out of both sides of her mouth. She says, you know, we got we to take care of Main Street, not Wall Street. Well, Wall Street's been taking care of you. And by the sure. way, do you have any offshore accounts? I mean, let's get started. Yeah, you want to get started? Let's go. I don't know if you realize this, but you tend to be a morning person. Did you know you were this fired up in the no, morning? No, because I was up to 1.30 watching all this. Uh, and okay. I got up before. Look out. Uh, the judge just getting primed up. All right. Thanks so much.